Hey guys, welcome to Double Comma Dreams. This episode might be better than the last episode. I know we gave you like, was it seven tips, Theodore? Seven, but I think we said we gave you 15. I don't remember the number. But this one, you got to watch because we talk about VR, editing your blog with unlimited screens. We talk about keyword research. TJ tells you how to find keywords that are endlessly possible for your blog, like snatch, 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 snatch. <laughs> My wife's going to reward me tonight for these instant keywords. Um, we talk about brand versus authority. Oh, no, actually, brand versus niche, not even authority, because brand is authority and niche is kind of not. But I'm going to let TJ jump into the rest. <laughs> oh, my turn. goodness. So Nico is obviously way better at intros than me, but we do talk about keyword research, scoping out competitors and finding great keywords. I actually give you an actionable way, like step by step. I should probably be charging for this, showing you how to find keywords that you could be ranking for that you're not. In fact, I told this to Nico a month ago and you should show them your stats. Actually, it might take a little bit. This is supposed to be an intro. Those stats are looking like this. They're boom. And he's going straight up like skyrocketing. It's amazing. So Let's go ahead and dig in. And at the end of this episode, you're going to learn the difference between a niche site and a brand site. I lay it all out. And Nico has some thoughts to share, which include VR, as he mentioned. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and dig into this episode. And guys, I know I mentioned that it might be rewarding for your wife. I know everyone has different preferences. So this is an all-encompassing reward party. Don't worry. So let's get started. <laughs> let's dig in. There we go. I think we're going. <laughs> perfect <laughs> i was i was talking about last video how we had the jump cut from the intro and i right when they go into the normal video i'm like all like slouched down. <laughs> i know i know i love it we need like a little you know how some videos have like a like a little five to 15 second little intro of something like b well you roll footage we need that to go from our like high energy intro to like our <laughs> our podcast that's like just sitting here chatting so yeah i agree Oh, as we start this episode, I wanted to make a comment. Um, if you have any questions or anything that you want us to talk about on this podcast, uh, we love reading the comments. Like both of us read every comment right now. So drop a comment below. Let us know you're a real human watching this video. We would love that. Yeah, I I usually check the comments each day, but every time I check the comments, it seems Theodore there has already answered the comments before I even get to them. <laughs> So I don't know if you're I, getting notifications for them, but you are on top of it. No, I just, I love checking them when people like share their thoughts or they're like, this was helpful or they have a question. I just love like replying to it. So, uh, but some of our recent videos haven't been getting to, especially the podcast episodes, haven't been getting too many comments. So if you want to leave a comment, I would make both of our, that would definitely make my day. I'm not sure about Nico. Maybe he likes it. Would, it would make too. my day as well. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So, I wonder if they get more comments if we broke the videos up. So we've mentioned splitting the videos into their core topics. I wonder, because maybe not a lot of people watch the full episode. So it's like the only time they might comment is when you just mentioned it. That's true. Yeah, so basically we have like an hour of footage. And you're saying if we take like eight minutes here, that's about one thing. Uh, two minutes here, that's about one thing. 15 minutes here, that's about another thing. If we made those separate videos... You think we'd get more comments on like more specific topics? I think it would be more specific comments. They'd be like, yeah, I agree with this topic or here's some ideas around this topic. Instead of them not watching the whole thing and being, they don't know what to comment on. That's true. Also, if the whole, if the whole podcast is about 50 different topics and then they drop a comment about topic number three, that, that makes sense. Like you almost have to leave a timestamp with what your comments about. Yeah. So we can sense. work on that. Maybe we can test some things. We'll see. Anybody wants to become a part of the Double Comma Dreams team? It's not going to be paid, but it's going to be a start of something if you want to help us with cutting up videos. We're not making any money doing this, so not yet. We'll anyways. see what the future holds. Soon, soon. Send us a send us your offer at contact at doublecommadreams.com. Oh yeah, so I finally set that up. <laughs> yeah, contact at doublecommadreams.com. I need to if, put that in on my phone so I can actually check the emails from that yeah if anybody wants to help and um become a part of this process i think it'd be cool building a little team around here to help people pursue that would be nice so i kind of mentioned this to you earlier but what i wanted to talk about on this pod was keyword research uh scoping out competitors and then also like the difference someone mentioned this in a comment which is kind of what inspired it the difference between a niche site and a brand site 
uh, you what you want to die? Are there any one of those that you want to dive right into first, or do you just want to like go down the path that I've written out here? Let's start with keyword research first, and I'm gonna screen grab my current analytics, and we can talk a little bit. I'll toss them up. Let me save an image of it so it doesn't show my actual keywords, and then you yeah, can talk about the importance of actually. This is gonna be your best month yet, by the way. It is. Let me get it pulled up here. So you keep doing what you're doing and I will get this set up. All right. So actually the first thing I was going to talk to you about and get your ideas on is grouping clusters of keywords. So usually there's like one big website and then they have like 10, maybe five to 10 different clusters. And then each one of those clusters has like 20 keywords or a hundred keywords. And then most websites are set up that way. Um, so I'm not sure if you can, talk about this without explaining what your specific niche is. Um, but what are your thoughts on that? Is that, I think that's what you're doing, right? Yes. Yeah, so are you talking about, let's just say the, that, um, so one of our sites has to deal with, uh, beverages. We don't really focus on it. We don't really do much. We just put money in it and then realized we'll get back to it. Well, one of the beverages is like, let's say, Actually, let's just not talk about the site. So there's not any opportunity to mention it. Let's say you're creating I a can... site about so like soft drinks. And you're like, I want a site about Dr. I have a whole 60 articles about Dr. Pepper. What kind of Dr. Pepper? What is Dr. Pepper made of? What are the ingredients in Dr. Pepper? And then this... I have a category about Mountain Dew. And I'm like, oh, what's the ingredients in Mountain Dew? What's Mountain Dew made of? Yeah, so it kind of breaks it down. And I think that's one a great way to do keyword research. I got I pulled up pestsamurai.com here, which is a great example. They got ants, bed bugs, cockroaches, spiders, and hopefully I haven't tested this yet, but if I click on spiders, hopefully it's a whole bunch of yeah, a whole bunch of articles about spiders. And so that's they've done literally this. They came up with clusters. I think some people call it the silo model, where you have like different silos of information. Um, and on the websites that I've done, this is also how I do it to where uh Basically, I'm going to say I'm going to dominate every keyword about ants. And then like right here is ants. This is not my website, by the way. Um, and then, oh, this one actually goes to a page. Um, but you can see the page here. <laughs> these are all links. So ghost ants, grease ants, moisture. I didn't even know. I don't even know what half of these are. Um, but they've obviously written about like ghost ants. They've obviously written an article about that. Um, so Grouping clusters is a great way if you're if you know what your niche is and you're writing about it. For example, if you are actually part of like pest control, you're going to know these are going to come off the top of your head. Like my dad does HVAC stuff, which is like uh, air conditioning and heating and furnaces and stuff. And I was like, Dad, I need five different topics of things that you could come up with subtopics about. He'll be like, oh, air conditioning. Here's 20 keywords. Heating. Here's 20 keywords. A heat pump. Here's 25 keywords. Because my dad is like an expert in that. He's literally been doing that for 40 plus years, I think. So my point is, if you are an expert in whatever you're writing about, even if you're not, you might be able to come up with uh, these clusters of keywords. This is really interesting. That <laughs> Did you see this? There's been a critical error on your website. So <laughs> this website's obviously having an issue. Um, but... <laughs> this is not good. They are losing lots of money right now by not. I saw their traffic. Um, but so coming up with clusters of keywords where you have like one main keyword and then you have like 20 different sub keywords, which is like kind of what they've done here that it's about pests. And then the main keyword is ants. And then like there's like 20 different types of ants here that people are searching for. And then maybe how to get rid of black, black ants, how to who uh, prevent them from getting in your house in the first place. You can have even more like uh, keywords there. So I'm just going to wrap up like topic number one, clusters. If you can come up with clusters within your niche, it makes coming up with keywords much easier instead of actually like going through Ahrefs and finding those. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yes. And when you think of the clusters, like try to answer every single possible question. Like become, so I've seen a lot of people mention that when you start out, you should have just one cluster and be like an expert on that. And then next cluster, next cluster, next cluster. So like your site to Google is known as the expert of Dr. Pepper. Like <laughs> if, if anything Dr. Pepper related, your site is the go-to. And once you gain that topical authority of that silo, you're like, you bring in Doc Mountain Dew. And then you become the expert of Mountain Dew. And then you get all these soft drinks done. And now you're an expert of soft drinks, not just Dr. Pepper. 
But yeah, that topical authority, that word, that, that like phrase that you just mentioned, that's like a perfect reason of why to do clusters so that you can gain that topical authority. Um, like being known as the expert in these sub niches um, is a really good reason to go for clusters. So when um, you were building your first site, did you mm -hmm. do clusters or have you just been actually know the site you're building right now? Are you just buying articles all over the place or are you building them into clusters or what is your process? No, yeah, both of them. I did the cluster models, so, cluster model. Um, so the first one I did it, I, I wish I could say the words because it's like, <laughs> it, you know what I'm talking about. It breaks yeah. up into categories really easy. And the second one, which is pets, um, it's like you just if there's 20 different pets and then there's like 10 keywords, 100 keywords for each pet. You just take like this pet and then this keyword and you put them together. And that's how I'm building the second site. But make sure Tej and I are getting reared by a Zoic right now. Like <laughs> bending us over and <laughs> like, because we have categories that don't have a lot of posts on them. So yes. if you're going to start a new category, make sure you are committed or apply for a monetization before you start that new category as an option. It's an idea. Yes. Yeah, so if you already have like 300 posts and you're starting a new category I, and that category is empty, I would not recommend applying to Ezoic because they're going to see that that category is empty and they're going to just be like, they haven't written anything about it. I would take that category down, apply when you get approved, put it back up and then add those posts or wait until you have at least six or seven. Um, Ezoic literally sent me and they said, like I have a message and they say, make sure you have six per category. So that's the number that Ezoic mentions and that's the number that i would probably recommend although if you can get past eight if you can get past 10 that looks really good on like a home page for that category because uh, you don't want a small category page yeah which one day we'll get monetized on those sites <laughs> soon soon uh, which <laughs> hopefully i came up with a list of things that you can improve we could talk about it on another episode um but what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> i got I did some more research and I found some things that you could improve to maybe get monetized. Oh, uh, sweet. Like I said, we need the, we need another day where I come down and I'm just like, let's go through this stuff. So well, literally there's like in five days. So, yeah. So you're going to be busy for a little while. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the next thing uh, that I wanted to share was how I do keyword research on Ahrefs, and then maybe you can share a little bit about how you do keyword research on Simrush. Which, now that I think about it, I think I've been doing keyword research for you. Is that true? You yes, you printed out. So I don't pay for Ahrefs. I'm not at the position. It's expensive for me. So I had my good old friend Theodore print out a big old thousand column list of keywords difficulty within this certain new uh grammatical sentence and then i'm just going through each of those keywords that are on that um that sheet so he has technically done the research for me I, I will say yes you have done it your research has started with let me finish can i share this uh what do you mean can, can you see this uh you should we should put it up like there we go. Yeah. Make it a little bit bigger. That's good. Is this going right. to show your site on it? No. Okay. If it does, I'll blur it out. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, so this is a pest website. This is a pest website that's doing really well. They're 170K traffic. I would assume they're probably doing at least double that. And then it's in the pest niche. So I would assume $25 CPM. So probably what? 35 times uh, 25 uh, is probably how much they're making a month. Uh, let me do that real quick. Yeah, eight grand and nine grand um, minimum. If they're doing affiliate, like Amazon affiliate stuff, they're probably making double that. So 20 grand a month. Probably. This is probably. This would be my estimation. You can see they also started back in January 2021. But um, I guess what I want to say is if I am doing research on like pest control, which I have thought about doing a pest control uh, website just by seeing how new this one is and how much traffic it's getting it tells me this is probably a good niche to go into um so i'm going to kind of walk through how i would do keyword research all right are you ready to go along and follow along this train ride yes okay. sorry about the little research? cut guys i realized my google fiber was not plugged in we so i was probably a little jumpy at the beginning 
we got it. So uh, the first step one is to find a competitor. And this is a step that you could skip. But if you if there's no competitors out there, it probably means it's not worth doing. So you definitely have some competitors and your competitors are winning big. Uh, so good luck to that. <laughs> I, I have some competitors, but I'm in this with my site number one. I'm in the spot now to where like if you look up the niche, I'm like website number two. So like I have one more competitor to beat and then I'll be like the number one competitor. That's actually really interesting now that I think about it. Uh, but when you're getting started, you want to find websites out there that are already ranking, that already have traffic. And basically, you want to copy them. Uh, copy is not the right word. I shouldn't use copy. You can look into their analytics and see what they're winning and then take a look at their pages and go, can I beat this? And if the answer is yes, this would be a great niche to get into. So we found a competitor here. I've actually found two. So Pest Samurai and HowToMurderPests.com. I like that URL. <laughs> <laughs> what's that i like that url oh yes uh <laughs> i was like this is this is really like clever too because it's easy to like tell someone oh you just go to how to murder um so step one is to find a competitor that is already ranking and has deep, decent traffic so if they if you have a competitor and they're making like five thousand uh page views a month that you might want to like go into a broader niche something a like if you're doing dogs you might want to go into all pets uh, which dogs is a huge like dogs it's just a specific type of dog uh, like you could pick one type of dog and probably win um, so that's step one find a competitor step two is to pop them into ahrefs and you can see i've done that here with both of these uh, we're going to be looking into how to murder pests first um, and so usually the first thing i do is i go down here and i go to top pages so this little thing right here where it says top pages i'll scroll up a little bit so you can see it top pages um, and then it actually shows you which pages and what they rank for uh, to get traffic. So they actually rank for a bunch of interesting long tail keywords. So tiny black bugs in bed, uh, flying bugs in house, not fruit flies. That's a real. That's like a long tail keyword. Not fruit flies added to that, and it's getting tons of traffic. Three K. Um, yeah, and if you scroll through here, this is why I was like, pests might be a good one to go into. White spider in house. They're ranking number one. Uh, Texas bugs in house, the ranking number one. They have a bunch of snippets and ranking number one all over the place. And you can see their first 50 websites or their first 50 pages, like even their 50th page is still getting like a ton of traffic. So if you find a competitor like this, it's really easy to just go through here and be like, I'm just going to write a bunch of articles taking all these keywords right here. Uh, and that's definitely something you can do. That's something I've done. It works. Um, morally it may not be the best thing uh what you want to caveat this with is that you want to make a better page than them so if i go to like uh what if i drywall signs of termites so if i go to this page i want to make a better page than what they have so if i actually go to this page is this an ad all right that's, an ad. <laughs> that was an ad that's like, that um, a weirdly placed video <laughs> i did too i was like that's weird so you can see they've got actually a pretty good page here they've got pictures uh they've got a bunch of headings this isn't like thin content this is like pretty good for uh, me right now that's an article i'd be like i'm gonna go find another keyword because i'm like the same one i can win real quick that's a that's a great point um and i'll show you something else you can kind of see if you'll win this or not and that's by going to the specific page so uh, or the specific keyword which we'll get into in a little bit but this is like the first easy win so if you're joining a niche and you're like what are my keywords this is a great way to do quote keyword research and find new keywords that might be in your niche that you haven't thought of yet so this is like step number two you have got to find a competitor that's step number one step number two look into their best pages um and you can see here there is kind of a value here this number doesn't really make sense ahrefs gives you this number it you shouldn't really pay attention to it i have a page that says i make like 50 grand and i'm making like a thousand dollars a month so maybe I wonder if it's a yearly value. Oh, this monthly search, yeah. So I'm not making <laughs> I'm not making 50 grand off that one page, although Ahrefs says it is. So these aren't the best things. Although one thing I do like that Ahrefs does is things that are more um, commercially oriented. So like if I'm looking up hats to buy, uh, like the value of those pages is going to be a little bit more because someone looking into that is wanting to buy something. So they're going to prop that up a little bit. Um, so. The next thing I want to share is you can actually go to their keyword spot, which this is another like super 
just knowing how to do this, you can start to pick pages that you write content for, and then a week you'll rank for it, which Nico has done this. This is literally how I gave him the list of keywords to do. I wrote so we're gonna two days ago, and it's already ranking. Exactly. And I have so, zero DR and zero UR at the current moment. That's a great testimonial. We should put that somewhere. I have zero DR and I'm ranking. That is <laughs> that is a that's a really good point. So um, the way and the keyword that he is ranking for, I found this way and I shared it with him. So you scroll down here to the left side and you click on organic keywords. Now technically Ahrefs is moving to version two, and that's exactly what happens when I click on this. And then we just go to version two. So we're still looking at howtomurderpests.com. Um, and then we're just looking for all the keywords that they're ranking for sorted by traffic. And then, so there's one more thing that we want to do here uh, to make sure that we get easy to rank for keywords. We can get all their keywords. Some of them are going to be a little harder to rank for than others. We're going to click on this position spot right here. And we're going to make sure that the top that it maxes out at is going to be 10. So we'll put uh, from zero to 10 there and then we'll click show results. And so this is where the magic happens. All of these keywords, super easy to rank for. Um, I'm actually not sure why 39 is showing oh, up here. Oh, you did position up to 10. Ah, you are right. So we don't want position. What we want is keyword difficulty up to 10. Uh, that is going to, <laughs> that's our secret sauce. So we're going to go ahead and change that keyword difficulty up to 10 and then click on show results. And now all of these should be green keywords that are super easy to rank for. And they're even sorted by like how much traffic this website is getting. So I could sort it instead of traffic, I could sort it by volume. But you do get some strange keywords when you do this sometimes. Uh, cockroach babies. <laughs> like maybe, maybe you could write an article about cockroach babies. Apparently a ton of people are searching for it and the competition isn't that bad. But <laughs> cockroach poop, what do crickets eat? These are keywords. If they're under 10, super easy to rank for. Um, and so like this is like, this is a secret sauce. If you want a bunch of keywords that are easy to rank for when you're starting your website, you don't have any DR, you don't have any backlinks, this is how you find those keywords. I so, will say, if you're just starting your website, there is a possibility that you can't pay for Ahrefs, and that is okay. I don't pay for Ahrefs. There's also another program called SimRush, and they offer 10 free searches a day. So like, you can get this exact same thing, but you only get like 50 of them. But you can organize by like difficulty. And I was doing that for a while where I was like, I would type it in. I'd be very strategic with what I was typing in. But I would use those 10 searches each day to like look up competition or um, find people similar to me. Yeah, I've actually never used SimRush. I've only seen Nico use it. Uh, so I need to try it out myself and see if it's better than Ahrefs, which I think SimRush, do they have $100? Ahrefs is $100 a month. So if you're I think like... SimRush is cheaper, but I'm not sure. If you got a tight budget and you're like, I need to make this work, you can buy it for $100 a month, do all of this in one month, keep all your keywords in one spot, and then can and then basically cancel Ahrefs. So you've paid $100 for all this keyword research. And that's what I would recommend if you're getting started. But, um, oh, I clicked on uh, <laughs> cockroach babies, which will <laughs> we'll actually do that in a minute. Um, actually, I think that's the next thing I'm doing. So if we go to any of these keywords, like cockroach babies, uh, let's actually do termites with wings. I think that'd be a little less weird. <laughs> so it brings us to this page which tells us all about this specific keyword so termites with wings we can see that the difficulty is six which anything under 20 is going to be pretty easy anything under 10 is going to be really easy and we can see that there's a bunch of volume too also now that i'm noticing it this cost per click right here is eight dollars anything above a dollar you're going to get paid probably a lot of money for <laughs> like my niche is like 75 cents to a dollar for some topics and then others it's like 50 dollars. and nico's niche <laughs> okay <laughs> I'll let don't say it. You want <laughs> his number is that. <laughs> higher than 50 dollars. <laughs> we've done some research so um and anyways if you scroll down here you can actually see what's ranking number one two three four five and you can click show more and i think it shows you the top hundred uh which is amazing um and i'm gonna make a note on this so let's say that I am website, um, let's say I'm website mymove.com and I'm ranking number three for this keyword. Um, so right off the bat, you can see that the reason I'm ranking number three is basically backlinks. So if you take a look at these other ones, this one's got 19 backlinks, or not 19 backlinks, but 19 UR, which is a number that's calculated from backlinks. Uh, Organ has 27. And then 
my move has 18. And so sometimes, even though another, like, Orkin has a higher backlink profile, they have better backlinks than Terminix. Terminix, am I pronouncing that right? I think so. But Google has still said that Terminix is better than Orkin, even with their backlink. So, like, the... I can't open these a new tab. Um, the content... Oh, I guess I did. <laughs> it's slowly loading. Um, the content yeah. on... You have a what? red update over there. I don't know if you should probably update your Google Chrome sometime. <laughs> yeah, that's a security issue. I really do need to update that. Um, but basically, Google is saying that the information on the Terminex website is way better than the one on Orkin because Orkin does have better backlinks. So if I was my move, I would see why Terminex is winning, which we can go to it right now. I think this is Terminex and see why they're winning. Uh, which they've got two, they've got a bunch of heads. I don't know why they're winning. That's a yeah. good thing. If you want to get into the pest, write about this article and write something good. Yeah, uh, they got two images and a bunch of headlines. So what does Orkin look like? Guys, okay. this is a good article. <laughs> this is, that's why term that's the whole process of this video is showing you how to find these good keywords. So the number one website literally has two images and I don't know how many words, but it's not a work, whole bunch. Do you have your word count on that one? I don't have the plugin. I don't think. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you can see why Terminix is winning, even though Orkin has better backlinks because this Orkin website right here, this just isn't a good article. I mean, it's like, look at this, all this screen I got everywhere else. And the text is really small. They've got one image. This looks like an ad. I thought this was an ad when the page loaded. Um, so that's obviously why Google's like, yo, Terminix is the clear winner here. But if I was my move, which I, if I go to here and I go to spot number three um, and I was my move.com, like the things I'd be doing, I'd probably increase the font size just a little bit. You can see that my move probably you give them enough time. They might move up to number one, but they, and they've got two, they've got a featured image and one image. So they add like two or three more custom images to this post. And then maybe they do some link building, which that's a whole nother, that's like 10 other podcast episodes we could get into. Um, but they do some link building to get this 18 up to maybe 25 or something like that. MyMove.com could easily move up to spot number one, which the traffic difference between MyMove number three and Terminix number one is, look at that, 3,500, yeah, around 3,500 page views a month. So that's an easy win. So I'm kind of spilling all the beans of some of the stuff I know. Do you have any questions so far? Just me like walking you through how I do keyword research? No, I'm learning as well right now. <laughs> all right. So another way I mentioned earlier, uh, coming up with competitors is a great way to like find keywords. So while I'm in here, I would like maybe go to orkin.com uh, and basically just open up their stuff and see what their top pages are. And then I would go to nativepestmanagement.com see what their top pages are. And you can look at all these other art, uh, URLs here that I could just pop. Now they're my competitors. I can put them in here and see what keywords they're ranking for. So this is another way to find a bunch of competitors, see what they're ranking for. Um, I'm not sure why whatever this one is, is getting a ton of traffic. Let's take a look at it. I like the old view. I don't like view 2.0. Um, that's interesting. I've only looked at the 2.0 now that I'm tracking my <laughs> site online. Yeah. So whatever this is, I'm not sure if it's links. There's not really too many links to this, but traffic is way up. So what are they ranking for? Oh, bugs that look like flying termites. And then what do termites look like? So just ranking for like those two things, they're getting a ton of traffic. Um, so let's go back to Keyword Explorer. So the way I got into this Keyword Explorer is I went to a website um, looked into the key, like keywords they're ranking for, and then I clicked on one. Now, what if we just want pest control? So a good way to come up with more keywords is just to type in like pest control here. And then obviously I don't want to rank 74K. Yeah, I I could rank for the word pest control. But that would be super hard. Uh, 87. <laughs> As this says there. <laughs> yeah, super oh. hard. This would be really hard to rank for. I mean, I, we're literally competing with the homepage of Orca and Terminix, Clark Home Pest, uh, ho yeah, Home Depot, Wikipedia. These these are homepages too. These aren't even like posts. So it's be really hard to rank for this stuff. So the next step to find other keywords, um, you can go to this matching terms right here. 
And so matching terms is like any keyword that has the word pest control in it. Um, and then we can do our si like same little like secret sauce where we max out the difficulty at 10. We could probably put it at 20. But then we can find a bunch of uh, keyword like Cook's Pest Control, 24,000 people searching a month, which this is a brand. So if someone's looking up Cook's Pest Control, they probably want to go to like cookspestcontrol.com instead of your website. I wonder or if maybe... you could write, write a review about them and get to like second or third. Yeah, that was literally the next uh, word coming out of my mouth oh. was uh, that you could probably write a review. So you were like, you're, you're starting to like <laughs> come up with creative ideas to rank for these things. Writing a review for Cook's Pest Control. In fact, you could do Cook's Pest Control review. And that would be like a really good way to start ranking for this. And even if you're number four, there's a ton of traffic. So there's going to be some people that fill like overflow into number two and three and four. Actually, there's a, this is a lot of pe certain people's pest control. That's really interesting. Uh, but this matching terms right here, this makes sure that pest control is in the keyword. So all of these have the word pest control in them. If you want just a little bit broader, just the pest control like space, you can click on this related terms here and then also do our little secret sauce where you change keyword difficulty to let's do 15 this time. We'll get a lot more. And I can close all these tabs up here. So we'll click show results, let that work. And now we have a bunch of keywords that don't have the worst, the word pest control in it, but they have to do with pest control. So like bug MD at home Depot, uh, Obviously, Home Depot is probably what they're looking for, but you could still rank for it. Um, fumigation services, that one's five is pretty low. These ones with zero, that probably means they're like 500 words. You might be able to rank for it. Simrush has an uh, option where you can search by, you can organize by search intent. So they take all the keywords and they're like, this is informational. This is a commercial keyword. This is a transactional keyword. So commercial, they're looking for a business. Transactional, they're looking to buy a specific product. Informational, they're looking for questions. So you can get to this level of search and then organize it by um, informational if you just want to write blog posts or commercial if you want to write reviews. And then same with transactional if you want to try to do Amazon products too in it. Yeah. And you can kind of do something similar with Ahrefs, but they don't tell you what type it is. So that's really mm. cool that SimRush does that. That would be really interesting. But what you can do is you can sort by CPC, which is cost per click, which is basically how much is an advertiser willing to pay to like have a customer for this keyword. And if you sort by it, you can see the ones that are at the top is like someone is about to buy something. One-time pest control service, they're about to buy a pest control like product. Mm. Um, and so these are the really high ones. That's just something you can do to look for high value keywords. We should put together, and if someone's watching to this level, you should comment below if you want us to. Maybe have this as a paid resource in the future, but we should just start recording little videos and put them in like a little um, a tutorial vault. section or like a little teachable website where people can be like, oh, here's how to do keyword research. Let people test it for a while, see if it works for them. That would be very interesting. Another, um, right now, before I forget, so this howtomurderpest.com, another way to find their keywords is to open a new tab, do howtomurderpest.com slash sitemap.xml, and this shows you like their sitemap. Um, actually, they've got a plugin that hides it, so <laughs> they're smart. Let's try Pest Samurai. So we'll do Pest Samurai slash sitemap.xml. And they should load it. Let's see if it works. So yeah, they have Yoast, which means now we can see their, all their posts. So if we go to post sitemap and we click it, you can see this is taking a minute to load. They probably have a bunch. So yeah, they have 575 posts. That's like literally how many posts this website has. So if you want to write 575 posts, you could be competing with them. But you can see when they last modified it. So like this, this was like a week ago. Oh, that's their homepage. Uh, this was a couple months ago. Bed bugs and cars. You can basically see all the posts that they they've updated written. everything almost. They updated a lot. Well, not yeah. Some of these. Oh, you're right. Some of these are. Uh, these were very recent, like a week ago. Do LED yeah, the lights bottom ones bugs? are the most recent. The top uh, ones are the oldest. This is more of a so Ahrefs gives you a really good idea of which ones to do first. So you can sort by keyword difficulty. So if it's zero, like 
you want to get that written, you want to let it saturate in time. You saturate, that's not the right word. What's it called when you, marinate? You want to let it marinate in Google a little bit. Um, because if you're if it's zero and you're there for a year, you're probably gonna be sitting there top position in a year, as long as you got good content. And I, I want to stress that again. If you're gonna steal someone's keywords, and again, steal might not be the best word, but if you're looking at someone else seeing what they're ranking for, you don't want to just take what they're what they've put and put it on your page. You wanted to make something better. You want to add unique content, custom images, tables. Okay, let's be real here. What's that? If you need to take their keywords and you need to build your site up, write your content. If it ranks better than them, so be it. Go back at another time and make that content better. Oh, yeah. Just there get that keyword. Uh, what I will say, um, you meant, what was that working keyword that we just looked up? It was like, do termites fly or something? Uh, yes. And I will say, because there are some keywords I rank better than some people that I know put a lot of time into their content. But you got to trust that you'll go back and have the best intention to put more time than they put into it at some point. Yeah, and that keyword difficulty might go up over time. So I have some posts that I rank for that's like the keyword difficulty is 30 to 40. Um, and I, I wrote them a year ago and they're ranking maybe number nine. So I'll go back and edit them and then they'll go up to number three or two. Um, so keep that in mind. You can always edit a post later in the future as well, and make it better. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to spend five days working on one post a year later. You look, Hey, how much traffic has this gotten? Yeah. The first three months of my site, I came out with like 40 posts and those accumulate for zero of my clicks right now. And the last 15 to 30 posts I wrote in the last four Two weeks account for all my traffic. <laughs> and I barely wrote them. I'm just like putting up templates basically that I'm going to go back and re-edit the valuable ones. That's a good point. That's a Because you definitely are writing about stuff that people want to read. There's just like eight people a month that are searching for one of your articles. Now that I think about it. Really interesting. Really, I didn't notice that. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. What else do I got for you? <laughs> uh, Actually, I'll show you. While TJ is looking at it, I'll finish pasting this thing because I think it's a really good um, – just how you're mentioning making the best posts, not telling you that you shouldn't. But um, let me crop this bad boy. One second, ladies and gents. I popped up my Google Doc. I've got a few more things to talk about, which one of them I'll say real quick. Uh, sometimes Ahrefs volume number is wrong. So I have a page that I'm ranking for where Ahrefs is like, good job, you're getting 2,000 page views a month. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm making, I got 20,000 page views a month to this page all through search. So if you see something that says 50 and you have a hunch, you're like, I think there's way more than 50 people searching that a month. Go for it. You can write that article, especially if it's like the difficulty is 10 or below. So you guys will see this on my. Um, That's beautiful. How'd you get it to do that without. Is that an image? Yeah. All right. I just toss it into the um, browser. But so you see this whole from 8 7 to 10 23, actually, That's probably gorgeous. 10 16. I worked as hard as I could writing the best post I could. Well, also not being very consistent with it. And as you can see, this little section in the middle was it was okay. Like I got lucky on one thing just boosting up and then it went down. And this was a whole month of nothing happening, no growth. It's just sitting there. And I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this. I was starting to lose interest in the site a little bit. And then TJ was like, try these keywords. And then, okay. <laughs> but also don't focus so much on making them the best. Just get them out there so they can start. And then look at it. It's just, it's booming up. I'm doing, well, I'm all... I will also say I'm publishing two to three po posts a day at this time. So there's a lot more content going out. But so what I do is I write two posts that aren't the best, but they rank. And then each day I go back and edit the best performing posts. So I have a whole spreadsheet of posts I'm going back and editing. So I don't feel so bad about putting out crappy posts. Like they're going to become good at some point. I'm just seeing how well they rank. That's, that's a really good point. You also don't want to, like I said, the five day rule, you don't want to spend five days working on a post that no one's going to see. And then, but you can test it and see if you put some effort into it, 10 people are starting to see it. You're like, I'll put some more effort into this. And it sounds like what you're doing. 
which yeah. I will say you are posting way more content now than you were, at least in the amount of time that you're doing it. So that is also like a big driver. So yeah. congrats on that too, by the way. Thanks, um, man. Thanks. The other thing that I've mentioned, I've mentioned to you this a couple times when you've asked me questions about it. If I could go back, I have 600 some posts on my main website. I would have my writer write a, not my, not a single writer. <laughs> I would, I, I would write <laughs> and I would have my writer help me, writers help me create a thousand posts without editing them just to get them out there. And then I'd go back through and be like, these are the posts that are winning. We're going to make them amazing. Uh, or at least they're winning with like barely doing too much to them. Um, and then I would double down on those, make them way better. And then I would go to like the middle section and I'd be like, these are kind of winning. Maybe with some love, they can like win some more. And then I'd update them. And then I would slowly just keep updating my content as opposed to making amazing blog posts every five days, making one. Um, and so another portion of that is I've realized some of my posts are losing to other posts just because that first post has a year on being on Google compared to mine. So they have another year. I, maybe mine was created in 2018. Theirs was created in 2017. And that other year is just giving them enough to win, whether that be like through extra backlinks that just happen organically or just sitting there for another year and Google trusting them. Uh, so that's one thing I would say. I would focus, and this is actually, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Like I, I, I told you on Snapchat, I... This is with site number two that I'm trying to like become another brand. Um, I'm like going to create a thousand posts and then I'm going to go back, look at the ones that are winning and double down on them, create YouTube videos for them, add custom images, create author bios for each like section. So is that how you're the experiment? Is that how you're building a brand around it? That's my goal. I want to find the easy one is brand sites versus authority sites. Actually, I got. Yeah, we can go into that one. I have some stuff about how, finding other keywords, but they involved like um, answer the, is it called answer the public? Answer the public. Yeah, that's a good one. You can use that. Uh, type in whatever keyword you're looking for and then put the word Reddit after it and then just see what people are talking about because Reddit posts are really good for finding content. And then you can go to Ahrefs free keyword, keyword generator and they give you like five keywords a day. And they give you random difficulties, but it's hit or miss, but it's worth a shot. Um, also, Google Auto Suggest, that's a really good one. You can find like a main keyword and you can find another keyword that someone else is looking for. And the last thing trends, trends, Google Trends is good. Oh, uh, yes. Um, trends is good. The last thing I was going to mention on keywords is the niche site metrics and niche finder, which I was going to make a specific video about this, but I have used one of them. Uh, and I did find like another site in my niche that I can just pop into Ahrefs and see all their keywords. Uh, so those are those do seem to be helpful. <laughs> You're, I'd love to see the that. video that you would create. I think we both have heated thoughts on that situation. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait till we all buy buy our blue check marks here soon. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Let's go into the difference between a niche site and a brand site. I've got some topics. I want you to go first. My throat's a little sore. Oh, so you may go with first with my topics that I've curated. Yeah. So creating web, creating blog posts in a VR. <laughs> I am an ambassador now. I will say I did it last night and I did it this morning and I thoroughly enjoy the experience. So I'm sitting here with one monitor, right? It's easy to get distracted over here. Easy to look out the window and be like, look at those beautiful clouds. I want to get up, go lay in the bed, blah, 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 blah. And I get distracted. I will say I get distracted easily. But when I put on that headset and I have one monitor here, two monitor, and I'm like, you know, I want four more. And I'm looking around at the beauty of my website, analytics, keywords, writing, <laughs> website. I love Everything it. I need to function on the blog, it's right there. I don't have any distractions. Last night, I had New York City beside me, a live wallpaper. Live. I'm looking at New York City here. I'm looking at some dead trees. Like, some leaves are all gone. Trees. But, oh, my goodness. You, you ruined my mojo, Theodore. <laughs> you got this. I'm trying to keep this going. You're a great salesman. <laughs> so, I'm not distracted. And, okay, the handhelds are a little messy, but... Facebook has done really well with their voice text. 
So I've just been voice texting the whole time and just editing it as I'm going. I have an experience with posting the article. I will say I went back onto the computer and edited it a little bit just because there are some things that were hard to edit within there. But I have found a breakthrough while looking up better ways to do this. There are keyboards. You can create a virtual desk within your Oculus mindset, your Oculus view. Put your keyboard on your desk. Like I'm sitting at this desk. I draw my desk. I put my keyboard down. Put on my headset. I get zoned in to write the blog post. And I have my keyboard here. And it shows up in the Oculus because I have a hard time remembering keys. It is what it is. I have to look down. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> so the keyboard is in the screen now and you can see the keys and I'm getting the keyboard tonight probably. I haven't told my fiance, but it's probably going to order it. Um, yeah, I'm, in, I'm interested to see what the workflow works with it because you can use your hands to pivot and point things on the screen too. And the website viewing experience on the VR, top notch. I have told Theodore, I'm looking for ways to implement VR specific. Attributes. I was gonna say we gotta wrap it back. <laughs> we gotta wrap it back to the difference between an niche site and a brand site. Well, here we go. I am looking and thinking of potential after I write all my darn articles and actually get some traffic to the site of implementing actual VR attributes onto this website because I think it's a big thing coming. I'm a proponent. Mr. Zuckerberg is on to something. People it might be, be making fun of him, but they made fun of Nokia and look at him now. <laughs> I got a smartphone. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it. Sorry, that was a whole tangent, guys, but I am I'm excited. No, yeah, you are right. I think if VR does become a thing, VR websites that have the capability to do things within VR that enhance the experience is going to be a big thing. So if I'm looking at like Chewy.com and I got their website pulled up and behind the website, I see a bunch of dogs running around and then some guy in VR... He's like, hey, you want some of this dog food? <laughs> that sales process is going to be so much better than just... And if there's like three different versions and I'm like, I want the one that's like, I got a big dog and I want this type of food so that he doesn't go to the bathroom all the time. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be so much better than like, like live feedback instead of just like trying to scroll and trying to find wh which one my dog needs. Uh, it, that's just with a dog example. Imagine... I'm trying not to use your niche. Imagine uh, imagine a health situation where you're like, my ankle hurts. I just want someone to look at it. And you could like talk to a doctor and you're like, and they're like, does it hurt when you do this? Like move it this way? And you're like, yeah, it does kind of hurt. Um, that feedback, like that Im immediate feedback compared to just reading an article or a Reddit post or something is going to be way better. That's a brand, not a niche site. Yes, and the ability to focus, like I was on it for like two hours and I did not like stop because there was nothing else to focus on. Like it was your world at that point. It'll be interesting to see if you do that for a month to see if it's just a novelty or if it really does like remove distractions because that's I'll something I did that. not expect yeah, was removing either. distractions. So but that is that really ties into the whole brand side and niche side. Like there's, I've been, when I update posts, I've been trying to make a YouTube video with it been trying to do some other brand type type stuff speaking i've got a few things on my list do you have any other than the vr stuff do you have anything on your list no that's all i got i was so excited about that <laughs> you thing. sold that so well too i'm like <laughs> i want a quest now <laughs> <laughs> after you gave yours away it was basically broken so i can't complain mm. um and we didn't use it too much and then we gave it away and then now you're like selling us again <laughs> we're gonna be a repeat customer because of you um Sweet. also the tech is probably like the software has probably improved a lot since we had it like, i will, I will say it's heavy so if they could do it lighter with like better things that that'd be a lot easier i just sat on my couch for a couple hours and did it yeah so first of all i want to sell you on why you want a brand website and not a niche website so when i went to try to sell my website number one um a year and a half ago i actually talked to i don't know if i can say it I talked to someone at Flippa. You know what Flippa is, right? And I was asking them about what multiple I could get. So how much I'm making per month multiplied, and then you take it by a multiple, and then that's how much you can sell it for. So let's say you are making $1,000 a month. Average right now, the multiple is around 35 for a basic niche site. So if you're making 1000 a month, you can sell it for 35 big ones, $35,000.
if it that's a niche site if it's a brand website the multiple goes from like 35 to 60 so you if you go from a niche to a brand you immediately take your sale value and go from 35,000 to 60,000 you almost double the value of your of what you've built so it's a really good idea to build a brand site than a niche site just because the exit value is going to be so much higher so what makes a brand site? I've got a couple things here, and I want your opinion on them as well. So the first one is, when I think of what's a niche site versus what's a brand site, niche sites usually don't sell anything, and if they do, they're other people's stuff. Brand websites sell their own thing. So if you're, I wish I could use my domain, man. Uh, brand websites, when they sell something, their logo is on what you're buying. It's where we'll just go ahead and say it. So we started a tea <laughs> website. It doesn't All get right. any traffic. It kind of sucks. We'll work on it one day. We started a tea site. A niche site would be affiliate links. A brand site would be, I'm going to white label our tea, and we're going to come up with our own recipe. Because we have this audience, let's sell it to them instead of um, just doing affiliate links. Exactly. So brands sell their own things. If you're a niche site, when you go, I don't have anything to sell, I just won't sell anything. Or better yet, you go, I won't, I don't have anything to sell. I'll sell someone else's something. You know, you're a brand when other people are coming to you and go, I don't have anything to sell. Can I sell your thing? That's when you really become a brand. So your own products is like big thing. Number one, to know if you're a niche site or a brand site, brand sites sell their own things. Um, I've got a few other things here. You want to hear them? Lay it on me, Theodore. <laughs> I'm ready for knowledge. Right. The second thing is do they just have a website? So most of the brands I look at have Instagrams, Instagrams. I don't know if you, <laughs> they have an Instagram account, Twitter accounts, YouTube channels. They have all these other things. I need to register my Twitter. So keep talking. <laughs> they have all these different like uh, social media things to have a presence on all of those websites. Niche sites. They're like, I'm just trying to make a check. I'm putting content out there. It's on the website and I'm getting a check from it brand sites are like we want people talking about our stuff we're going to make a facebook page so people like it we can give them ads and they'll talk about our stuff so that's a that's a like big difference number two between a niche website and a brand website and remember the difference between these two is like twice as much value so if you can do these things you can go from times 35 to times 60 and in some cases i've seen up to times 100 uh so if you make a thousand dollars a month and you're a big brand you're probably making uh, more than a thousand dollars a month, but you could sell it for a hundred thousand. Um, I, when I talked to Flippa, they told me forty-five to fifty is what I could get, which means I basically have a brand. Uh, not basically. I mean, I do have my own products. I also have way more than just a YouTube or a blog. I also have a YouTube channel, which is like big thing number three. Most brands have their own video content as well. So even if it's just on their website and they host it. They have video instead of just text. So what's your thoughts on this as you're registering for Twitter? <laughs> no, I was actually going to my YouTube channel for this one and seeing if like people are actually watching the videos. And I posted a video where I literally just read off of my article. Like I put it in a PowerPoint and turned each heading and text into its own um, slide and just read off of it. And it's at 10 views. So again, yeah. like it's solidifying that brand. When I go to an article, if whoever wrote that article has a YouTube video there that they made that matches the color scheme of their website, that is like the the actual person that wrote the article, I'm going, whoever wrote this article did a great job. They are invested in helping me. And when I do that, I think of brands. That's a brand doing that. And that's actually what I did with my website number one. And technicality, I made a bunch of YouTube videos. And then someone told me you can make money with a blog too. So I turned all those YouTube videos into articles. And now... The articles are articles with YouTube videos. And when someone lands on that, they go, this is a high quality page that like actually helps people. So that's like number three. The first one, your own products. Number two, other social media things and like actually posting on them, not just like setting them up so you can tell Google you have a Facebook link. Number three, uh, video. So that usually means YouTube, but you can do other things too. And Google, if you look on your search console, one of the articles I have that I made a video for Google is registering an in-page video for it that is linking back to my YouTube page, which then that video is linking back to that article. 
Yeah, so we talked about this little secret trick before where you have a YouTube video and an article. In the YouTube video, you can put links in the description and you point to the article. And then on the article, you put the YouTube video so they link to each other. And when you have your own video on that article, YouTube will start putting your video in the search results if that's what's deemed best for the customer experience. Yeah, so I moved, I went from Thrive Themes to Generate Press. I think I mentioned this in another podcast. And when I made that switch, Thrive Themes said, goodbye to all your YouTube videos you've embedded. And so before, when someone would find my website on Google, they would be like the title and then like the description. And then literally, because I had a YouTube video that matched the article, it would be a little like image of the YouTube video. And that helped click through rates so much. Do you have an example that's not your site? I'll try to find one. Let's see um, if there's any. I'm trying to say in the pest niche, but yeah, I just, I don't actually, I don't think I could find any. You, That'd be hard to... you see them pretty often on mobile compared to desktop. So mm. you see the, like the little videos a lot more on mobile. So those are like the three big ones. And I think I'm going to clip this video and put it on the channel, by the way. Yeah, no, that's good. You I've... should also clip the VR experience one. Yes, that's going to be great. Also, if anyone's still watching and you want to help, we're kind of fun to hang out with on StreamYard. <laughs> Yes. Also, that, <laughs> that one person that emailed us, they want to talk, which today would have been the day, so we might hop on after this podcast. Oh, they still want to talk? Yes. I've been... Oh, shoot. It's Give my fault. Me. I've been super busy. You've kind of been busy, too, but I've been super busy, so I have I was like, just send me an email on Monday if I haven't replied, and then let me know. It's Tuesday, so... Well, let's hop <laughs> on it. Let's... Yes. A um, few more things before we end this episode. We're like an hour already. Uh, the difference between a niche site and a brand site I've got a few other things. First one is logo. So some people don't even make their own logo or they buy a $5 logo. Having a professionally designed logo can make a big difference. I don't know how you do it, but you've made some Canva. very... Prof is it just Canva? You can make a whole tutorial series on that because I've seen some of your logos and I'm like, this dude should be paid as a designer for this. To preface that though, don't... I struggled with this for six years now. Yeah, probably about six years. <laughs> Don't put so much emphasis on your design and creating a brand site at the beginning. Just get articles out. Yeah, I would say... It's super successful for me. Just get articles out. And the nice thing about website and blogs, you can update everything as you're going along. Like my homepage, I, my whole website, I was like, this sucks ass. Oh, this sucks booty. It's not even better either. <laughs> I love <laughs> this it. Isn't We're best. keeping that. But... Um... Um, I just went ahead and just was updating little things as I go. And now I look at the site. I'm like, this is exactly what I wanted it to be. But at the beginning was really hard. Cause I'm like, I just need to keep doing articles. This will turn out to what it needs to be. Yes. So as someone who is making $10,000 a month from a blog, don't mess with your logo or your theme until you have a hundred posts. Same goes for you, Nico. I would advise you with that. <laughs> and I cool. have data to back this up too. Um, which I'll share in a second, but I want to finish this differences between a brand site and a niche site. Uh, brand sites also have really good about pages. So niche sites, they usually have AI created people's faces. You can tell they're AI too, because it's like the same exact proportions for every image. Which I we found that out with one of my competitors. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then um, about page. And also usually they have like a backstory of like actual people's names to where niche sites don't really do that. They're like, I'm just putting an about page up just to please Google, just to get ads on here. Uh, another thing is with brand sites, they usually have multiple writers and editors, which you'll usually see in the about page. They'll be like, here's our 10 writers and here's our two editors, which we've had conversations about that. We might need a whole nother episode to discuss that. And the last thing, the really easy win, uh, I'm gonna call it an easy win, is that brand sites usually have custom pictures and not stock photos. So if I'm looking at Ahrefs for competitors, and I see that they have this this website's really winning, but I go and look at their pages and they're all stock images. I go, I can beat that one. I can definitely beat that if they're using stock images. So and it's really easy to take custom images and put it on your socials to then reshare. Yes. Back to the theme thing. I want to share this uh, tweet. So I'm going to share my. Can you see that? Oh yeah. I lost 25% traffic switching. Yeah. So things. this guy makes like almost a hundred grand a month and he's like, I lost 25 and he's also replying. Um, let's see if I can do this without, he's replying to someone who also is like changed their theme and they're like down in traffic. So, uh, 
multiple people have reported just changing a theme can make you lose money. So themes really matter once you start, like if when you're past 100 posts and you start making money, until then it doesn't really matter. Um, yes, scroll up real quick. That's what the VR experience is like. Scroll down to those computers. I need I need one something to put here. You see all the screens? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go through. We've got a couple of minutes here. We could probably just chat and hang out uh, after going through everything that I wanted to talk about. But I wanted to go through my Twitter and just look through some of the things that I've liked because some of these things are really interesting and I thought they could provoke a conversation. Hmm. Which this one, this guy's making $1.3 million a year because he has 11 jobs. I bet his resume is going to look great when he applies to something else. <laughs> That's true. You can see that he's working one to two hours a day, even though they think he's working full time. So I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I thought this was really interesting. Um, hmm. This Paul Limley guy. All right. I'm not even going to shout my own Twitter handle out because I don't post the I don't post amazing things. This Paul Limley guy. If you're watching this, go follow Paul Limley. This guy. He deserves a shout out more than my own Twitter account. <laughs> this guy posts so many interesting things. Um, he's talking about the ideal niche here, which we can make a whole podcast episode about this. He's like large identifiable audience, spectrum of fandom, clear path to repeat traffic. And I actually started thinking about this. I was like, so my websites are people going to visit more than once. Um, I started thinking about it and I was like, for website number one, definitely because of what they're looking up. Website number two, maybe if they have a good experience. Uh, credentials that audience will trust and then also wide swath of products. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, what else did I like here? Oh, this product I wanted to, I told, I think I told you about this. You can see it, right? Wow. It, this is oh, another yeah, one. Of those, you show me that the custom image thing. So like if you're doing a product review, uh, what you can do is you take one picture of this product you click a button and there's like, here's 50 images of that same product that you can use in your post. This AI product is going to make a lot of money. Dang. Wow. Do you know how long it would take to make all those different backdrops and then edit it in Photoshop? Yeah. Especially if you have like 20,000 products, you just take one image each and then boom, which they raised 19 million. So like, people have already found out this is going to be a big deal. If you go through the like tweets that I have, which you can follow me at Six Digit Niche, um, <laughs> I have some tweets here that I thought were really interesting. So this one is just like, if you use Ahrefs Webmaster Tools uh, and you, you use these filters, you can find some high volume keywords that you haven't, that you're not ranking for yet, which I thought was really cool. I was going to try that. Um, another thing is, um, actually, I was going to have you do this after this pod. You use regex, which do you know what regex is? Oh, it's I don't like, know exactly what it is. I've looked at it though. It's like kind of like code, but mm. I don't know how to explain it because I don't fully understand it. But basically, you put this in here, and then it shows you all the tra all the words that have these all the keywords that have these words in them, so you can find a whole bunch of questions and stuff that people are asking. Hmm. Uh, we've got another. <laughs> hey, that's me. And then uh, two more things I wanted to share, which is uh, from also Paul Limley. Uh, you can see we've also begun working. So this guy has like a huge budget to start a whole bunch of websites. Um, he's working on 50 websites. I don't remember what the total budget was. I think it was like a million dollars or something like that. But he's created 20 websites, at least him and his team. And so they're learning all kinds of things and they're sharing it with his like Twitter. So like I said, go follow him. Tons of interesting things. Um, before we show that graphic, he said things that they're working on, uh, video creation, featured image creation, and in-content graphics, which those are kind of like the, some of the stuff I talk about when building a brand. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Those are yeah. like kind of easy ones. That's basically all that I'm doing at the moment when I update an article. Besides the graphics, I don't. I was thinking about paying someone in the future to make custom graphics. Who knows? Right yeah, now, I just take stock photos. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, and then this thing was like, these were basically, I don't know. I don't want to speak for him, but basically he had these project projections of what these 50 sites were going to produce. Um, and you can see that he's definitely outperforming them. Um, and what I thought was interesting, he shared once he's like, they have 10 websites that were live. Um, hold on one second. How do I make it? So it's just us. 
So he had like 10 websites that were live and each one was like a little portion. And what he found out was these were 10 different websites. Two of them were like big winners, big. They like paid off all the other websites that did not win, which is kind of how like VC investing and angel investing and like it works. Like <laughs> you, you're going to lose a lot, but then the ones that win, you hope pay off everything else. And so that's kind of how he's doing with niche websites, um, which is really interesting to me because I have like two, two to five websites right now. So it's like, I, I do have one that's clearly winning. Should I double down on that or should I work on other websites? Should I try to find other ones that may be winners? So I thought that was interesting. And then uh, there's some other stuff here that I've liked that I thought was interesting, but we don't have to talk about. That was, this has been a good episode. We're at an hour and 10. Yeah, we are. And I think I covered everything yeah. I wanted to talk about. I think we are good. We can talk with that gentleman, which might be watching this podcast. Hopefully. So, but you ready to do the extra, the intro? Yeah, we gotta we gotta go ahead and close off this video. Um, we will see you guys later. If you aren't already subscribed, please. Actually, we have a bunch of asks. I don't like asking for things, but I like growing things. So that means I gotta ask for some stuff. So I'm gonna do an ask, and then you do an ask. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go first. Please subscribe to this channel. If you're not, if you're watching this video and you've made it to this whole hour and you're not subscribed, you're missing out. If you click that bell icon, which I don't think I've ever clicked a bell icon in my life, actually, now that I think about it, I'm a great salesman. If you click that bell icon, you'll actually get a notification of when we make new videos, which is really helpful because we do like one a week. Guys, my ask is that you keep doing your best. <laughs> You can't do me like that. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. My ask is that you look at your deficiencies in your site and in yourself and that you spend this week working on it. My deficiencies was content creation and not doing what I said I was going to do. I started doing that and I see growth in my website now. So my ask is that you guys take an honest look at yourself. And if you're not performing, tell yourself you suck and then figure it out. So that's a, that's a way better ask than what I came up with which was subscribe and hit the bell icon. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. We'll oh. see you guys later.